Okay, so now if we think about what we've already done, we're going to put it all together in order to actually graph a polynomial function. So the first thing is actually to find all the zeros. So to find all the zeros, we're going to use factoring. If factoring doesn't work, we're going to use the rational zeros theorem, and we'll do an example like that. Um, if we're using the rational zeros theorem, then synthetic division comes in handy to find zeros and to go ahead and factor it. Once we find all the zeros, we could say that the next step is going to be to actually plot all the zeros. And the only zeros that we'll plot will be real zeros. So if we end up with any that are imaginary, they won't actually be on our x-axis. So we can find the multiplicity of each zero at that point, determine end behavior, and then finally we can go ahead and just complete the graph. So things to consider when we complete the graph um, is you can always just plot extra points, find extra ordered pairs to get a better idea of what your graph is actually going to look like. Um, a lot of times it might be helpful to choose points in between the zeros you already found, plug those points into the function to maybe see how high or low your function actually goes to, and then go from there. So let's look at our first example. For this one, uh, for our function, when we find all the zeros, it's already factored completely for us, so we don't have to do any extra steps there. So we're going to go ahead and just identify the three zeros. And then once we have those, we can just plot those on our graph. So 5, negative 3, and 1, put those on the x-axis. But negative 3, we've got 1, and we have 5. So once they're plot, plotted, we might go ahead and look for the multiplicity for each one. So again, we're looking at the exponents for each factored piece. So there we have 5 as a multiplicity of 1, negative 3 multiplicity of 2, and 1 has a multiplicity of 1. And then at this point, though, um, just to kind of review the multiplicity, we're looking at whether it's odd or whether it's even. So for the first one, since it's an odd multiplicity, we would say that it crosses at that point. So what that actually means, if this is our x-axis, that's our point. If it starts below, it just crosses right through the x-axis at that point. If this is our x-axis, if that's our zero and it starts from the top, it actually just crosses right through um, to the other side. As opposed to the negative 3, which has an even multiplicity, so we might say that it touches the x-axis. So if this is our x-axis and that's our zero, if it starts on the bottom, it touches but then turns back around um, and then doesn't actually cross through. So again, if this is our x-axis and it starts on above the x-axis, then we would come down, touch that point, and then bounce up, and then go in that opposite direction. And then the crossing for the 1, 0 would be the same as for the 5. So then we can go ahead and determine the end behavior. So to determine the end behavior, we're going to look at the leading coefficient um, and the degree of the polynomial. This is actually a little bit more difficult to find if our polynomial is already factored completely. So at this point, um, what we're going to need to do is to multiply through, which means the point 1 times x minus 5 times x plus 3 squared times x minus 1. We essentially want to multiply it all the way through, um, or there are some shortcuts that we can use, because when we multiply it through, all we're really looking for is what's going to be the term with the highest degree. So sometimes we can actually do that by, maybe I might start with x plus 3 squared. When I multiply that all out, my first term is going to be x squared, so that's going to be my largest. And then if I take that and multiply it by x minus 1, there's going to be a lot of other things taking place too, but essentially the x squared gets multiplied by the x, leaving me with an x cubed as my leading term there. And then if I take that and multiply it, let's say, by x minus 5, the x cubed is the largest term of the one polynomial. If I multiply it by another x, it becomes x to the fourth. And then finally, if I multiply through by point 1, that actually becomes the leading coefficient. So the first term actually is going to be 0.1 x to the fourth. So you could multiply all the way through, but we could just also try to keep track of that first term, because that's the only one that really matters for n behavior. So since the leading term is 0.1x to the 4th, the point 0.1 is positive, and the 4, which is the degree, is even. So those are the things that we're looking at. So because the degree is even and the leading coefficient is positive, then we essentially have our graph moving up on the left and up on the right, and that's going to be our end behavior.
So here, if we try to graph it, I might start up on the left here, and then I know that I'm going to have to go down and eventually reach my first zero, which happens at negative 3. Then once I get to my point, negative 3, I have to figure out where to go from here based on the multiplicity. So one thing I look at is the multiplicity for negative 3 is even. So I'm going to actually have to turn back around and then go in the upward direction. And actually, before I do that, maybe I want to plot actually a couple extra points. So I don't know how far to make my graph go up once I actually um, have my graph turn around. So I might choose a point in between negative 3 and 1. So if I choose 0, it would go up to 4.5. So it just gives me an extra point. And then I may also, for the same reason, want to choose a point between 1 and 5. So if I choose 2 and plug it in, it tells me it goes down to negative 7.5. So it just kind of gives me a little bit better idea. So there's my 0, 4.5. So at negative 3, I have to turn back around. And then I do know I have to go up to the point 0, 4.5. And at some point, I have to turn back around if I'm going to go through the 0 at 1. So I turn back around to hit that point. And then once I get here, I have to look back at the multiplicity. So the multiplicity for 1 was odd, so it's going to cross right through. So if I have it cross right through, and I also found the point 2, negative 7.5, so it verifies that I do actually cross through and kind of gives me an idea of how far down to go. But at some point, I have to turn back around if I'm going to actually hit the 0 of 5. And then finally, we look at the multiplicity for 5. So it's odd, so it's actually going to cross through. So I'm just going to keep going in this direction. And that's the last 0 that I have, so I'm just going to keep going in that direction. And the nice thing is it actually matches up with the other end behavior, because we wanted it to go up on the right anyway. And so this is our final graph.